Back to the daily grind, the channel's getting false flagged by triggered trolls, so make sure you subscribe to the new channel, let's get to the MMA news. Robert Whittaker's coming out and he's fucking speaking like a true champion. He's speaking like if you're any type of fan, this is the type of dude you would want to have the belt. He ain't worried about politics, he ain't worried about getting skipped over. This is like Tyron Woodley minus the complaining, literally. One of the best fighters in the world, and he does he's not going to cry and complain and cry racism because even though he has the interim title, so he should get the shot at Michael Bisping, George St. Pierre's getting to skip the interim champion, and guess what? The interim champion doesn't care. He's not crying. That's not what he's here to do. He doesn't care. He doesn't think anyone's racist. He's not doing none of that shit. This is good shit to see. I love I, Robert. I mean, Tyron Woodley's one of my favorite fighters, but Robert Whitaker is like Tyron Woodley plus. He's everything you get from Tyron Woodley, minus the crying, minus the complaining. How can you not like that? This might be become one of my favorite fighters, like period. Robert Whitaker, as of right now, because I'm loving everything I'm seeing from the dude. His his personality, his fighting style, everything. On top of, um, Robert Whitaker. Man, you know what fight you, that blew my mind before I thought about doing this video that we can't, we're not going to get to see, but would literally be my favorite fight that could happen out of 2017? Robert Whitaker versus Gegard Mousasi. They were both in the same division. Holy fuck, just thinking about that fight. That's an MMA orgasm. Robert Whitaker versus Gegard Mousasi. Fuck. Literally, probably the two best middleweights in the world. Gegard Mousasi has the experience. Robert Whitaker has a little bit of youth. It would be like the perfect clash. I don't have anybody on this planet being able to beat Gegard Mousasi in middleweight except maybe Robert Whitaker. Wow. Anyone who's been listening for a while knows how high I value Gegard Mousasi. To me, he's the number one pound for pound fighter on the planet. Not we we I mean, no one gives him that credit. Everyone goes to straight to like John Jones Connor. But, I mean, if you want to get super technical and all type of... I mean, I could definitely argue Gegard Mousasi versus any... Versus Fedor versus John Jones. I mean, I could argue it. I'm not saying it's 100% the fact, but I could definitely argue it. I'm fine with you if your opinion is Gegard is the GOAT. Because that's my opinion. I think he pound for pound wise, translate moving up and down divisions. Gegard Mousasi is the number one. But, Robert Whitaker. Wow. Robert Whitaker is one of the only guys that I feel has the skills, the athleticism, what that it might take. Because, you know, Father Time loses to no man. Even Gegard Mousasi, even though he's the number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world, eventually the age is going to catch up to him, and he's not going to be able to handle these young guys like Robert Whitaker. But right now, Gegard might just be in his prime. This, If the fight was going to happen, it would have had to happen like this year or next year. And with Gegard moving to Bellator... Robert Whitaker becoming the UFC champion. Only way we're ever going to see that fight is a co-promote if it happens really soon, which sucks for me because I would love to see Robert Whitaker versus Gegard Mousasi. But Robert Whitaker, let's get to the point of this fucking video. Robert Whitaker's coming out and he's not complaining about the fact that Michael Bisping's fighting George St. Pierre, not fighting another top contender, not defending his belt versus another top contender. Isn't it interesting how many fans... And sideline people on the sideline will complain and cry about uh, George St. Pierre skipping all these contenders when the interim champion's not crying and complaining. Isn't that crazy? You've got the interim champion who's guaranteed a title shot when he comes back. And then you got people like Tyron Woodley. And these other guys, you know, in the um, you know, like the Rockholds and the Widemans who were stagnant for a while, you got these guys who just come out and they 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 complain and oh, why does George St. Pierre? Why doesn't Michael Bisping have to fight? Why is George? Whoa, 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 whoa! You're whoa. Why? Because this is a business and people running a business and that's what the business fucking that's what they decided was best for their business. Now the real question is why are you motherfuckers coming out and complaining and crying? This ain't your, you, you know what I'm saying? This, your job is, uh, their job is to make the UFC profit, to become the biggest business possible. Their, these guys' job is to become the best fighter possible. So it's in there, it's in the UFC and the owner's job description to put on the best fights. That's why they're doing it. Because they have to make the most money possible. They want to put on biggest fights. But what, what is, why is somebody like Luke Rockhold coming out who doesn't have a belt at all? 
and 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 taking shots at Michael Bisping. Michael Bisping should be stripped. He's not fighting another contender. Even if he wasn't fighting a contender, even if he was fighting the number one contender, it wouldn't be you. Even if he, if he was fighting any of the top three guys, it wouldn't be you. So why are you worried about what he's doing with his belt? And when you got the interim champion, Robert Whitaker, not even saying Michael Bisping needs stripped. You've got the interim champion and Robert Whitaker, who's fine with everything happening. He just wants to heal up, and it doesn't matter if it's Bisping or George St. Pierre who's got the title when he comes back because he wants either one of them. But you got people like Luke Rockhold, who barely breaking the top five right now, who took a loss, lost to Michael Bisping, hasn't fought a year since he lost to Michael Bisping coming out, and he's talking about Michael Bisping needs stripped. Why? That has got nothing to do with you. I mean, at least Tyron Woodley, when he complains, he's a champion complaining. Tyron Woodley couldn't do this complaining if he was just a contender. Luke Rockhold feels like he can do this complaining as a contender. And, and, and then to top it all off, Instead of fighting a contender to make it look like, you know, whenever he says Michael Bisping needs stripped, you would think he's saying that because he wants the belt. Well, if you want the belt, why'd you take a fight versus David Branch instead of Yoel Romero or Chris Weidman? These guys that are middleweight stars, the guys that are known in the top five. Why would you fight a guy in David Branch instead of one of these guys? Hmm. I don't understand that, really. What what sense does it make for Luke Rockhold to fight an unknown guy, a dangerous unknown guy at that? David Branch, he's coming from World Series of Fighting, and you can sleep on WSOF. Actually, they changed their name. You can sleep on World Series of Fighting if you want, but that's where quite a few, Marlon Marais, Justin Gaethje, there's some good people that come from World Series of Fighting. They're not all trash. If, the, if UFC is the A League, Bellator is the B League, WSOF is the C League, and some of those guys like Justin Gaethje came over here and just put a top five UFC UFC uh, lightweight on his ass, Michael Johnson. So you can say whatever you want about World Series of Fighting. No, their overall talent doesn't compare, but they've got some good guys. So David Branch is another one of those guys coming to the UFC. Why would Luke Rockhold, a guy that just got knocked out by Michael Bisping, take a fight with David Branch? A less known, he might even be a higher risk unless he's seen something in David Branch's videos that he thinks he can exploit. I don't understand why Luke Rockhold would take the David Branch fight over Romero or Weidman. Even Weidman. He's coming off of a win over Gastelum. Wait for him to get that W and get your rematch with Weidman. Are you trying to save it for the... I don't understand what's going on with Luke Rockhold's mind sometimes. Maybe he gets too much pussy. Maybe he hangs around too many women so he it rubs off on him, their opinions and that estrogen and shit. I don't know. I really don't know. I just know Luke Rockhold, for, but also for some reason, he doesn't take as much slack as Tyron, though. Maybe it's because he hasn't said the word racist, but what, he's never going to say that. When is Luke Rockhold going to say, I'm not getting my shot because I'm white? That's not going to come. So Luke Rockhold, he's got less of a reason, less of an excuse to be crying than Tyron, to be talking about someone needs their belt stripped. He needs to be fighting contenders. What are you talking about? You need to be fighting contenders. You need to be working your way back up to the belt. Even Dana White blasted Luke Rockhold. Dana White said, Luke Rockhold, what are you talking about? You deserve something. You just got knocked out. What? So I'm not understanding this. So Robert Whitaker, he said he's leaning. Let's get back. I don't even know if I, I, I think I got sidetracked. I don't even know if we covered this. So I'm going to cover it and get on out of here. Robert Whitaker, he's coming out. And he's leaning toward Michael Bisping to beat George St. Pierre. Interesting. This is a, this is going to be a good fight when you start thinking about the winner, Michael Bisping versus George St. Pierre, because George St. Pierre's the legend. George St. Pierre's the the name that everybody somewhat feared. You know, everyone Brazil. Um, what's the word? Ah, I can't think of the word. Reveres. George St. Pierre's got the name that everybody reveres. Like, oh my God, that's George the GOAT. He's coming back. Oh my God. But he's coming back to a bigger weight class. He's a wrestler. Can he wrestle the bigger body like he did the welterweights? Ooh, interesting. Will Michael Bisping be able to use his jab and keep that fucking dent all night with his defensive wrestling and keep George St. Pierre honest? Ooh, interesting. Is George St. Pierre going to have to revert to somewhat of his striking style from back, back in his early days? Is he going to have to go karate kid on this motherfucker, Michael Bisping, to win this fight? What's going to happen? Robert Whitaker's leaning toward Michael Bisping. This is what Robert Whitaker had to say. He said, Michael is a tough guy. If I had to lean one way or the other, I'd probably lean towards Michael. I think he's got what it takes to get over him. And hey, that's a good point. 
I think honestly, when my when my prediction comes in, it's probably gonna be toward Michael Bisping unless I see something from GSP um, that makes me lean think otherwise because I haven't seen from nothing from GSP for like three years, neither have you. So unless he's got some crazy ass sparring embedded like workout training videos, like when I see Amanda Nunes is training and sparring or workout videos, I think holy shit, ain't nobody working as hard as that girl. She is literally in there, you can tell, working fucking hard. You know, some people just work the cameras and try and get that good camera shot. No, she's just in there doing her motherfucking thug thizzle in the training room, training as hard as you'll ever see anybody train on video, and they just happen to get their angles. So if I see something like that from George St. Pierre, if he, if he trains as hard as Amanda Nunes, then I might be able to lean toward George St. Pierre, one of the GOATs. But as of right now... It's, and Robert Whitaker is thinking it too. I'm going to have to go with Michael Bisping. I think he, he's got what it takes to get over George St. Pierre's wrestling. I think he's got what it takes to keep George St. Pierre at distance. His defensive wrestling keep George St. Pierre up. And then, what is George St. Pierre going to knock him out? Oh my, dude, the more I think about this fight, the more I'm, I'm getting excited for Michael Bisping versus George St. Pierre. I don't know who's going to win. I would probably uh, lean toward Michael Bisping at this point like Robert Whitaker. But anyone can win. And think about this. This is one thing I'll say before I really get out of here. If George St. Pierre wins, Robert Whitaker's acting like he knows he's getting the title shot, which would still be a huge fight. Canada versus like Australia, you know, still they both still have damn near continents behind them, not even just countries. Uh, New Zealand, you know, I mean, th that entire, you know, so you see what I'm saying? It will still be a huge fight. Whether it's the uh, England or the UK for Michael Bisping or Australia for Robert Whitaker, it's still going to be a, a worldly fight, a global fight. Still going to be a huge fight. So Robert Whitaker can sit back, heal up, and whoever wins, Robert Whitaker's got that money fight. The champion, no matter who it is, Bisping or Robert Whit Bisping or George St. Pierre is going to be a big fight for Robert Whitaker. The only obstacle that could lay in front of Robert Whitaker is if is if George St. Pierre wins the belt. And decides not to defend the belt and decides to go down and and win another belt or what's he gonna do what's george st pierre gonna do if he wins this fight wins this title is he gonna want to fight robert whitaker coming up again soon he might do it on a connor card i bet that if they can get george st pierre on a huge card he'll defend that belt versus robert whitaker get him some connor connor mcgregor pay-per-view points and george st pierre and connor on the same card would be literally nuts so he might do it. So that is what it is. Uh, Michael Bisping, Robert Whitaker's leaning toward Michael Bisping to win the George St. Pierre fight. And I mean, I, I talked about a lot of other, other shit in this video too, but that's the gist of this video. <laughs> I know we talked about Luke Rockhold for a minute because that shit just kind of confuses me. So I ranted on that for a second. But yeah, one, uh, final thought. Luke Rockhold's been doing a lot of complaining on, in, on Twitter and media and interviews. And he's not getting the same rap as Tyron Woodley. Just in the comments, tell me why you think that is. Is it just because Tyron Woodley said the word racism? Or, I mean, because they're both complaining. But Tyron's known now as a complainer and a crier. Luke Rockhold, nobody really thinks of him as a complainer and a crier. Is it because he, like, fucks model chicks or dates Demi Lovato or pop stars? I mean, why is Luke Rockhold not, his name not, syn you know, synonymous with, with a uh, complainer? He's been doing a lot of that lately, so it is what it is. Let the hitters know what the fuck you think about all of this, whatever you think about in the comments. Dude. Despite the old saying, don't take your troubles to bed with you, many men still sleep with their wives. <laughs> <laughs>